The ongoing restoration of the Boardman River to its natural pre-industrial condition has been good news to trout fishermen, kayakers, canoeists, and river lovers of all kinds. The cold water is flowing free and the high quality fish habitat is returning. But there's a tiny new invader threatening the health of the Boardman and many other rivers once again. Here's biologist Brian Keyes of the Osabo Institute of Environmental Studies. Mud snail or New Zealand mud snail is the, the full common name for it. It's a small invasive snail uh, originated in, in New Zealand and it's native there. Um, it's not typically a problem in New Zealand. It's controlled by predators and parasites. Uh, but when it was introduced into the United States, it's caused uh, significant environmental harm. Um, it was first identified out west in Idaho um, back, I believe, in the 80s. And it since then has spread in a number of rivers out west, sometimes reaching numbers of above 300,000 per square meter. So just immense numbers. And again, as we mentioned, it's a macro invertebrate. So it is feeding on the algae and materials that form the base of the food chain and then can change the resources for the fish. This prolific little snail reproduces asexually by cloning itself, creating hundreds of replicas a year, each of them cloning themselves. Through this process known as parthenogenesis, a single mud snail can produce millions of replicants in just a year, resulting in explosive population growth. Unfortunately, the mud snail showed up in samples of aquatic insects and other macroinvertebrates taken from the Boardman River in 2013. The samples were collected by the Osable Institute for the Conservation Resource Alliance. As part of the, pro the dam removal project, we had been contracting out macroinvertebrate surveys of, the, of certain parts of the river to get an idea of the dam removal projects impact on the river and ultimately on the biota within the river and one of the most reliable indicators of the impact of any project on a river is the analysis of its macroinvertebrates uh, bugs the the ones that are of most interest to folks interested in a fully functioning stream uh, but also to anglers in particular are the caddisflies, mayflies, and stoneflies. Up until 2013, there were almost no or very few snails. There are, are relatively few snails in the river in a natural setting. And so our samples were not collecting that many. In 2013, we started to see um, in the sort of 20 and 30 snails per square meter of surface bottom. Um, and then in 2016 is when those numbers shot up to over a thousand, sometimes two or three thousand per square meter. Last year in 2017, Al Sable didn't sample the Boardman River, another organization did and found in some locations those numbers were over 30,000 per, per square meter. So there, there was definitely an invasion and it's not unexpected that something new comes in like that. Um, that's why they're called invasive species, that they explode and they, they take over an area. If these growing populations of mud snails eat the food needed by aquatic insects, the macroinvertebrates, then there will be fewer bugs for fish to eat. That's a big worry. My concern is that there will be a catastrophic shift in the food web to the point where the native macroinvertebrates are no longer able to provide sustenance to the fish that rely on them for, for their nutritional needs. Michigan's DNR is also concerned about the impacts of mud snails. We met DNR fisheries biologist and invasive species specialist Dr. Seth Herbst at Gleason's Landing on the Pier Marquette River. This is the site of the first confirmed occurrence of a New Zealand mud snail in Michigan. It's a species we're concerned about because very similar to zebra and quagga mussels that have been established for decades in the Great Lakes, New Zealand mud snails are showing up and they have the ability to really limit primary productivity in some of our more popular rivers and streams throughout the state. The distribution of the infestation that we know about currently is the Pier Marquette River, the Boardman River, the Upper Manistee River, in the Asabo River. So as, as an angler, I'm sure many people are familiar with the popularity of those rivers and streams 
and, and that's a big concern for us as a department. So unfortunately, we don't have a, a large-scale effective control treatment option available to us right now. Um, so we're in a situation where as soon as they become established, they're really not going anywhere. They'll likely be in the Pure Marquette and those other rivers for many years to come unless a control agent becomes available to us. Um, but for right now, what we're really trying to focus on is working with all of our stakeholder groups to increase awareness on the issue and really get them to start uh, cleaning their fishing gear, their waders, anything that would come in contact with the substrate of a river or the water of the river because as soon as the species would become attached to say uh, a boot of, on a wader, if that fisherman goes then to another river, it has the potential to spread that, that mud snail to that new river, which is certainly a big concern considering we have as many anglers in the state as we do. So once the snails are in a river, there's no turning back. The question is, can water users, organizations, and governmental entities prevent the spread of this ecosystem disruptor? Keys seems to think it's already too late. Yeah, the New Zealand mud snails, because they're so easily transmitted from one body of water to another uh, through hitchhiking on waders and boots and um, in fishing buckets and so forth, um, are likely to have spread to, to most of the rivers in northern Michigan. And if their numbers build up to significant numbers where they're eating the, the algae and the paraphyton at the base of the food chain, they could have impacts in, in many ecosystems. Herbst is more hopeful. If we all do our parts in cleaning gear, waders, and boats of all kinds, we have a fighting chance at preventing the further spread of the New Zealand mud snail. I, I think if, if there's enough ambition and dedication among our user groups to clean their equipment and notice that aquatic invasive species are a big concern in the state, then yes, I think we have a chance at preventing the spread of this snail in particular. But it's really going to take a dedicated effort for, for, from everyone that uses our natural waterways to protect them. <laughs>